good morning all now we will be discussing question and answers and key pertaining to last week's economy prelims mock test so first question is microfinance is the provision of financial services to people of low income groups this includes both consumers and self employed so the services rendered under microfinance are one credit facilities savings facilities insurance facilities and fund transfer facilities which of the following uh, are the correct answers using the codes given below so we have options of 1 only 1 and 4 only 2 and 3 only 1 2 3 4 so first we should understand that microfinance institutions were promoted or being promoted by government in parallel with the many of the banks because most of the times people from low income group they don't have proper income tax returns they don't have proper uh, asset base and they don't have proper uh, kind of credit availability so because of all these aspects many times to uplift them or to promote any kind of like uh, further financial inclusion or their upliftment towards the ne next sector of income group has become very difficult for the government so in this scenario microfinance institutions generally provide many uh, bank uh, many uh, financial facilities what generally a bank provide like it gives credit may, uh, with a little bit higher interest because of uh, the kind of risk that are associated and the lack of proper asset base generally what are collateral which banks asks or mortgages which ba banks asks to give further uh, uh, like uh, loans and at the same time in microfinance also microfinance institutions also collect deposits to give more interest or uh, like to give more loans to public so first thing is availing cre credit facilities is the correct answer at the same time and also like because it takes credit uh, it takes deposits savings facilities will also be there at the same time microfinance institutions will also provide some insurance facilities by paying some premium so that is also part of microfinance institutions or microfinance uh, services are also rendered using this uh, particular thing and insurance facilities could also be availed and the th fourth thing is whenever these people take any loan or anything automatically those could be easily used to transfer it to other uh, people also see first one and two are automatically and easily could be recognized because that is a crux of microfinance institutions and in the options also for enumeration purpose one and two are easily available here in only option d and three and four are also part of the services that are rendered under microfinance institutions so option is d so first question answer is d next thing is a rapid increase in the rate of inflation is sometimes attributed to the base effect what is base effect see you should understand that <coughs> many times we come across this particular term in <coughs> excuse me so many times we come across this <coughs> this term in newspapers and this is pertaining to inflation because many uh, so when inflation is being compared this is be, this would be compared uh, pertaining to previous month or previous years rate of growth and that that will be taken as the basis for example best example is when in 2020 we had corona so our uh, whenever really uh, the thing is economy has slacked so much automatically there won't be that much inflation because the demand itself would be subsided so in those scenarios automatically inflation or demand for something will be very low and next quarter or next month or next year if you see automatically there will be spike in the demand so here the thing is because last year's demand is slack so when compared to last year suddenly we will see a surge in the growth so that is the reason why so we should understand that here the base effect is how the base is performing when compared to the present scenario so that's the reason why what is base effect 
it is like the options available are it is the impact of drastic deficiency in supply due to failure of crops it is the impact of surge in demand due to rapid economic growth it is the impact of price levels of pre previous year on the calculation of inflation rate so here you should understand that as we have discussed because how the price levels of the previous year are impacting the price levels of the present year because the base years inflation itself is low so base effect is pertaining to the impact of the price levels of previous year on the calculation of inflation rate and the answer is c not d so second question's answer is c okay so so coming to third question so which of the following statements appropriately describes the fiscal stimulus first thing before going into the answers available are the options available to choose an answer see fiscal stimulus is nothing but the kind of support or the kind of uh, uh, like the kind of focus and the kind of uh, scaffolding or support what government gives to the country as such when economy is not performing up to the mark or when it wants to give lot of impetus or lot of force or lot of a kind of uh, a nudge to an economy in such a manner that economy will grow further here what happens is it generally in fiscal stimulus it is a kind of a stimulus so the response what government expects pertaining to that stimulus is a positive growth in economy so this fiscal stimulus would be like uh, generated or this fiscal stimulus could be elicited in such a manner by the government by uh, rolling out more government schemes or uh, like doling doling out uh, free schemes or uh, pumping more money into the economy in indirect manner or even even giving stimulus to the infrastructure uh, growth and all those aspects because once a stimulus is given to infrastructure growth automatically more labor uh, uh, will uh, will be available with work so more money will be at the disposal and at the same time it gives lot of growth to steel and cement sector and all these things are part of the fiscal stimulus so what are the options available first thing is it is a massive investment by the government in manufacturing sector to ensure the supply of goods to meet the demand such caused by rapid economic growth so this is wrong next thing is it is an intense affirmative action of the government to boost boost economic activity in the country this is something according to our discussion next thing is it is government's intensive action on the financial institutions to ensure disbursement of loans to agriculture and allied sectors to promote greater food production and contain food inflation so that is not that is part of monetary policy that is not part of fiscal stimulus so next thing is it is an extreme affirmative action by the government to pursue its policy of financial inclusion so that is pertaining to financial inclusion not fiscal stimulus so option is b so so the third one option is b coming to the fourth question the thing is what we have to see is fourth question is all about in the context of indian economy consider the following statement first is the growth rate of gdp has steadily increased in the last 5 years so here you should understand that our growth rate has not steadily increased because corona here year had directly impacted the growth rate so that's why first answer is wrong coming to second thing growth rate in per capita income has steadily increased in the last 5 years here we should understand that india had achieved a total fertility rate of 2.1 and now the population rate growth rate has almost stabilized or the rate even the population is increasing it won't be so exponential when your tfr is 3 or 4 so overall our tfr rate is now around 2.1 so due to this two thing and now you should understand that when the growth rate is not steady automatically even though population rate is like this it is not like straight line 
so the net impact when there is any slack in growth rate automatically per capita income will also be impacted uh, drastically as uh, in the last 5 years there is no continuous steady growth because of corona year so we can say that even net per capita income or per capita income growth rate is not uh, not up to the mark so the answer is neither one nor two so that also is something uh, so that is the answer to fourth question so okay coming to next question a closed economy is an economy in which see first thing we should understand that more or less india till 1991 followed the model of closed economy especially for the first 3 5 years plan or 3 to 4 5 year plans india has had followed the complete model of closed economy even though our main criteria was import substitution our main criteria was import substitution so the main thing which india followed during that time is more or less closed economy but not completely but closed economy is something like take the case of the present north korea so it doesn't import most of the times and it doesn't export because no one is ready to buy because of the sanctions and no one is ready to uh, uh, send anything to north korea also because of sanctions so closed economy is an economy in which what uh, what are the options available money supply is fully controlled b deficit financing ta- takes place only exports take place neither exports nor imports takes place see like we said there are no exports no imports the answer is d so you should understand that so the closed economy the answer because there are no takers pertaining to the like no no one is going to export and no one is going to import so that's what closed economy is so directly it is a straight answer next thing which of the following can aid in furthering government's objective of in- inclusive growth what is inclusive growth to the best possible extent everyone would be brought into the growth cycle at the same time everyone will enjoy the fruits of growth and development so so that no one would be left out or no one would be like at the receiving end so that's what inclusive growth is all about so coming to what could be the government's object or what which of the following can aid in furthering government's object of inclusive growth first thing is promoting self help groups definitely because women empowerment and promotion of self help groups definitely enhance inclusive growth second thing is promoting micro small and medium enterprises because the moment you like give lot of impetus to micro small and msmes definitely more labor will be included especially in the vicinity and their income uh, earning capabilities will also increase a lot so that's the reason why promoting micro small and medium enterprises also part of this thing third thing is implementing the right to education act definitely right to education act will also like in the medium and long term will give very rich dividends so even though first two are easily recognizable the answer is uh, d because even right to education will give lot of uh, like ammunition to government to an ensure uh, financial inclusion in medium and long term so that is answer is d next thing is in terms of economy the visit by foreign nationals to witness the cricket match in india amounted to or what does it amount to see here the, the trickiness here is see someone from abroad is coming to india and they are watching a cricket match in india and so that foreign national who is coming from outside definitely he has to bring forex foreign exchange and he has to spend in india pertaining to buying tickets for accommodation everything so that is nothing but a person from outside is paying to like utilize the services or to avail the services in india so that amounts to export of services why because net foreign remittances are coming inside so 
it's a kind of a scenario where because foreign remittances are coming inside and services are being consumed <coughs> uh, from india so it is a kind of export of services it is not rela- related to other options like it is not imports straight away it is not production because the production is being done by a cricket match of both players of both teams both national teams so that is not production it is not completely ca- so the thing is it is not uh, completely con- consumption per se because you are paying to avail a service so it's a straight away question of export so answer to the seventh question is a next thing is consider the following actions which the government can take one devalue in the domestic so the question is it is pertaining to which of the following actions can help in reducing the current F- uh, current account deficit so the question is all about current F- uh, current account deficit so the current account deficit is because net remittances one is net foreign remittances and also your Im- export bill your import bill so the net of everything if it is something like if uh the thing is if <coughs> sorry it it is not the net of the things here current account deficit is how you are doing a trade based on that if your uh, merchandise exports are more than uh, merchandise imports definitely that is a kind of a like a pass to uh, there won't be any current account deficit if your merchandise imports uh, merchandise imports are higher when compared to your merchandise exports that leads to a scenario of current account deficit so to cover up the deficit you have to government has to follow many different uh, strategies right from promoting services like like how uh, software services are being exported from india that is one thing and also promoting are increase in foreign remittances from expats or from nris that is also one thing and also getting loans from or attracting fdis and also attracting fis all these things will enhance or boost our forex so that our current account deficit could be addressed so what are the following actions which can uh, ta- government can take to address the current account deficit and also please understand that even if you are able to promote our exports definitely it will address the current account deficit to an extent or to the fullest extent so that is also one thing we have to keep in mind so first thing devaluing the domestic currency the moment you devalue the domestic currency automatically that means let us assume every year for 1 dollar for 1 dollar we are ge- getting 70 rupees let us assume now after devaluing our currency has weakened vis a vis dollar now our uh, rupee will be 80 rupees so let us assume there is one product which is being sold for 8 480 rupees manufactured and being sold from country which is being uh, bought by us citizen so that is nothing but earlier for 70 rupees it is nothing but so uh 780 divided by this one so it in and around uh, 7 point 6.9 dollars let us assume now coming to 80 rupees now because 480 divided by 8 80 it will be in and around See, exactly this is 6 dollars so earlier the same product which was 6.9 dollars when kara when indian rupee is stronger when compared to earlier automatically now in foreign market it was it was being sold for only uh, it was being sold for 6.9 dollars now because india had devalued our currency automatically now the same thing is being sold for 6 dollars so let us assume there is a chinese product which is at 6.5 dollars now indian 
good has become more competitive because when compared to chinese product our uh, good is cheaper because we have devalued the domestic currency why because domestic people at the end they receive only in indian rupees even after converting the dollars so that's why when the dollar when the domestic uh, currency is devalued or devaluing the domestic currency automatically it enhances exports so it will address cadr current account deficit that is first thing second thing is reduction in export subsidy see the moment you are uh, reducing export subsidy automatically it will hit current account deficit badly because it will definitely impact the net uh, the net of export minus uh, import and if imports are higher your cad will increase so this is wrong so next thing is adopting suitable policies which attract greater fdi and more funds from fis so because if you are getting more fdi and more uh, fis definitely it will uh, try to like mop up or it will try to cover up the current account deficit that is being incurred so option is d so only 1 and 3 2 is not a right on uh, right answer next thing is in india is regarded as a country with demographic dividend this is due to one demographic dividend is nothing but population especially the working population which are available in a particular country so that country can focus more on economic growth than any other aspect why because if if they, there is lot of population if the lot uh, more number of people are in aged group or older people definitely we can't focus to the fullest extent at the same time in the country's perspective if number of people are more young means especially children in the age of 8 5 10 or something even though they are going to be the future potential individuals at present they should be educated they should be trained they should be focused and channelized in such a manner that they can really give us good economic growth so due to all these aspects what should be considered in the present scenario is that any population in the group of 15 to 64 are considered as most productive people so that's the reason why demographic dividend is nothing but it is high population in the age group below 15 years is wrong it is high population in the group of 15 to 64 years is correct it is high population above 65 years is wrong it is total high population is also wrong why because even though you have total high pop uh, high population if the number of aged people are if number of young people are very are on the higher side one compared to the middle bracket automatically it is not considered as demographic dividend so the answer is b that is it is high population in the group of 15 to 64 years next thing regarding international monetary fund which of the following statements is correct see international monetary fund especially intervenes when there is bop crisis and are nothing but balance of payments balance of payments is like we had discussed just now when there is high cad high current account deficit after a point of time because your exports are lower when compared to your imports and at the same time your remittances are also very low let us assume and your fis and fdis are also very low so due to all these aspects your net outflow of funds are far higher when compared to your inflow of funds it leads to a kind of a scenario where you have to pay net dollars or net uh, uh, for recognized foreign currencies to other players it leads to a kind of bop crisis or balance of payments crisis so generally imf intervenes when this kind of scenario comes up so regarding imf which of the following statements is correct one it grants loans to any country it grants loans only to developed country that is wrong because recently it had a bailed out to an extent sri lanka third thing it grants loans only to member countries it can grant loans to the central bank of a country among the c and d it grants loans only to member countries it is not uh, something it grants loans to central bank of a country 
it directly grants loans to the country itself to the member country itself so answer is c pertaining to imf question so next thing is both fdi and fii are related to investment in a country which of the following statements best represents an important difference between the two so what is the best difference between the two first thing is you should understand that fii is always considered as hot money fdi is considered as more like uh, long term investment and it is more into particular uh, like someone coming into pharma sector someone coming and investing in some software sector and they will buy some stake in the company and they will try to further develop the company that is what fdi is so which of the following statements best represents an important difference between the two first thing fi helps bring better management skills and technology while fdi only brings in capital okay but like we discussed fi is hot money it doesn't bring better management and skills and technology first one is wrong second thing is fi helps in increasing capital availability in general while fda targets specific sectors so this is one thing we can consider next thing fda flows only into secondary market while fi targets primary market it is not correct see primary market is something stock market and other scenarios whereas even fda tries to foreign investors they can try and uh, they can try their uh, luck even in primary markets only is not the correct option because it can be both ways next thing is fi is considered to be more stable than fda that is wrong because fda is more stable so the answer is b that is fi fda is sector specific whereas fi is helps in increasing capital availability in general so that with those funds our forex will also increase next thing which of the following statements related to gnpa and nnpa are true so first thing is gross non performing assets next ne, next is net non performing assets so non performing assets are nps comes especially in banking scenario and banking parlance so gnpa and nnpa are two terms used in tandem but there is a clear difference between both the things first thing is gnpa denotes the total of all the loan assets that haven't been repaid by borrowers within 90 day period whereas net and nnpa is the amount remaining after deducting doubtful and unpaid debts from gnpa so it is the actual loss suffered by the bank so first thing is gnpa denotes all kinds of loan assets that haven't been repaid by the borrowers within 90 day period see because npa is defined as something where the amount has not been repaid principal or interest by the payer within 90 days someone had taken loan they should start repaying the interest within 90 days so that is first thing pertaining to G, sorry that is first thing pertaining to gnpa coming to nnpa is a kind of scenario where after availing all the options available some people will start repaying to an extent after 90 days even if not completely to an extent so those kind of people will be considered as nnps why because uh, it is after removing doubtful and unpaid debts means still there is scope for someone to repay so it is the actual loss suffered by the bank so that is what nnps so first option is correct first thing so next thing is gnpa gnpa doesn't qualify the organ organizations actual loss whereas nnpa qualifies the organizations actual loss for example someone is not able to repay loan in 90 days but will start because once his business kicks in automatically he will be in a better position to repay the things that's what gnpa tries to do whereas in nnpa after removing doubtful and unpaid debts whatever is left for example vijay malia's case for example like nero modi case so these are like the actual losses because no more those uh, fugitives they they have really left the country and they don't have any assets which could be like really again uh, 
liquidated to collect all the dues so those kind of things only nnpa so nnpa qualifies the organization's actual loss this is also correct so third thing is gnpa for gnpa bank provides a time limit which the principal and interest must be repaid after this period expires the asset becomes npa whereas npa there is no such time limit in the net nn net npa why because see gnpa once after 90 days bank provides a time limit within which principal and interest must be repaid so the time limit will be clear you please repay after 90 days also this much has to be repaid this much has uh, to be like uh, address all these things will be part of gnpa but after this period expires like in the case of vijay malia so there is no time period so it has to be like assets becomes after this period expires asset becomes non performing so that's why there is no such time period we don't know when we can recover that particular debt so that's the reason why 1 2 3 are correct so that is pertaining to 12th question okay next thing is which of the following statements are correct first one is most export in intensive sectors in manufacturing are gems and jewelers jewelry ceramic and glassware leather and leather products drug and pharmaceuticals engineering and electric goods comma textile so we, we have to examine whether this statement is correct second thing is most exports as well most export as well as labor intensive sectors in manufacturing are first one is most export in intensive sector in manufacturing so in manufacturing sector what is the most export intensive these sectors are being pro like mentioned here second thing is in export now in manufacturing not only just export intensive uh, even what is the labor intensive as well as export in intensive first thing is textile and garments gems and jewelry leather products so which of the following is are correct first thing you should understand that gems and jewelry has a lot of export potential and ceramic and glassware we have a lot of demand next thing is leather and leather products also there is a lot of demand and uh, the raw material or the consumption or the kind of imports or the kind of uh, cost that is pertaining to the imports is not that much when compared to exports next is dr drug and pharmaceuticals even though we import many solvents net imports and exports if you see almost there is 60 to 65 percent net we export even engineering and electric goods also same thing same with the textile so first statement is correct second thing is most export as well as labor intensive sectors are one is textiles and garments definitely more people are required gems and jeweler also you need more number of people who work on those particular designs or uh, particular uh, uh, particular jewelry it is all handmade third thing is leather products so both one and two are correct so the option is c so that is pertaining to 13th thing so next thing is which of the following statements are correct so there are around 50 million salaried workers in our country which uh, which uh, which comprise around 10 percent of the total labor force in our country so first we have to say in this kind of questions it is all based on statistics first you should have clarity pertaining to what is correct what is wrong see it has it has been estimated the total number of working population in our country is around 50 crores 45 to 50 crores so almost the statement is correct so that is first thing is labor force in total is 500 million first thing and it has been estimated that our like formal sector our formal economy is around 7 to 10 percent means that is formal economy where uh, proper uh, salaried workers and other things uh, other people are there so first statement that there are around 50 million or 5 crore which is nothing but 10 percent 
salaried workers in our country which comprise around 10% of the total labor force in our country is correct next thing is in industrial employment share of contract employment has increased gradually for past two decades and now hovers around 40% of the industrial workforce because now every industry is moving towards contractual employees because of the labor issues and other things it has been now understood that the share of uh, contract employment has increased gradually for the past two decades from 23% to 40%. So this statement is also correct. So the answer is, and the third thing, so one and two are correct. The third thing is share of contract workers are casual, contract workers are nothing but casual workers and salaried workers. They comprise 30% of the total labor force in the country. See, second question is pertaining to in industry, 40% of the industrial workforce are contractual employees. So only we are here talking about industrial workforce. When it comes to this one, this is pertaining to total labor force in that contract workers, that is casual workers and salaried workers within the contract workers, they comprise 30% of the total labor force. This is also correct statistics. So this is all fact based and you should understand the trend. So all the above. So C is correct. Okay. So coming to next thing. See the multi-dimensional poverty index developed by Oxford and Human Development Initiative with UNDP support covers which of the following. So one is see whatever multi-dimensional poverty and human development index are uh, so HDA which have been developed now. So what are the which of the following do they cover in the uh, in multidimensional poverty index okay one is deprivation of education health assets and services at households that is first thing okay next thing is purchasing power parity at national level next thing extent of budget deficit and gdp growth at national level this also this we don't see because in multi poverty index or MPA, what the government is focusing is what are the different aspects pertaining to the manner in which a person's poverty is getting impacted. So only those aspects are being covered under multidimensional poverty. So that is pertaining to those sectors that have been identified as education, health, assets and services at households. So answer is only one it is a because purchasing power at national level is no way going to impact the manner in which how someone is going to afford or someone is going to get impacted due to poverty because they in uh, purchasing power parity it is pertaining to the prices but if they don't have proper educational health and other things it can't better so answer is only a next thing is consider the stages of Next thing, so consider, uh, consider, uh, excuse me, sorry, consider the following specific stages of demographic transition associated with economic development. So, here the question is it is about economic development. So, how the development is going to take place? So, what would be the transition of the economy? See, here we should compare different economies at different stages of demographic transition. Coming to first thing, excuse me. So, coming to first thing, here we should understand that. So, first thing any kind of highly underdeveloped economy it would be a kind of a scenario where there won't be like uh, much focus on family planning and other aspects whereas take the case of highly developed economies what is happening there their tfr a total fertility rate is less than 2.1 that means it ha they have come down below the replacement rates that is also first thing that's what happened in 
the scenarios like uh, japan and other 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 countries so that is one thing also we have to consider okay so coming to this thing so consider the following stages of demographic transition so when there is high economic development definitely you should understand that that's a kind of take the case of highly economically developed country like japan japan is where there is only like a very high aging population that means very low death rate okay so that is first thing we have to keep in mind second uh, like first uh, so very low death rate and also because the tfr is far lesser than 2.1 in these economies even that means the the birth rate when compared to a developing or developed nation will be very less so that means very low birth rate so this kind of scenario of low death rate and low birth rate will be something pertaining to high, highly developed economy that is first thing low birth rate and low death rate so in the scale of economic development first option will be here so wherever so op- option 1 will be in the this whatever uh, arrangement it will be here so what could be eliminated is answer a and b could be easily eliminated because one comes at the last so next thing what we have to see which is uh, 2 and 3 in 2 and 3 may take the case of second option uh, sorry uh, for considering c and d options here 2 and 3 may 2 may if you observe high birth rate with high death rate see if birth rate is very high it is a kind of scenario where and death rate is also very very high why because you don't have proper access to medicines and other aspects automatically that is what is ha- happen in the case of high death rates uh, in case of highly least developed countries take the case of african economies they don't have proper family planning automatically birth rate is very high and also they don't have availability of medicines affordable and other things because of all these things their death rate is also very high so both high birth rate and high death rate will be something pertaining to ldcs or least developed countries so option 2 will be available here okay coming to third thing so i can arrange what is third so we can check high birth rate with low death rate okay birth rate with low death rate take the case of india now slowly we have achieved tfr of 2.1 still other states are southern states have come down below tfr of 2.1 whereas northern states still they are above 2.1 around 2.4 so net is high birth rate our life expectancy is also now around 69 to 70 years so it's a kind of high birth rate and low death rate so three comes here the option is c so 16th one it is c next thing next question what we have what we have to see is which of the following can aid in furthering government's objective of inclusive growth so uh, sorry this has been repeated okay like i had discussed earlier so answer is both 1 2 and 3 option is d sorry so coming to 18 thing consider the following hotels and restaurants motor transport undertakings newspaper establishments private medical institutions the employees of which of the above can avail the social security coverage under esic scheme see please understand here we are given four options of hotel and restaurants motor and transport undertaking newspaper establishments and private medical institutions you should understand that esic or employment state insurance scheme ESIC is only covered or is only given for people who are our labor who are in the range of more than uh, 10 to 15000 to 21000 so people are uh, employees who are earning these are the net salary should be below 
take it as the bar if someone is crossing that thing so he won't be eligible to come under esa so in, in all these sectors definitely there will be employees who are who will be working for a salary below 21000 so everyone or anyone or any institution part of this particular thing or this particular uh, salaries should be covered under esic scheme for social security coverage so option is 1 2 and 3 answer is d so with this we are concluding for today's session pertaining to current affairs discussion uh, sorry questions uh, mock uh, mock question discussions and their answers with this i am taking a leave thank you